Hi Jay, this is Tim calling in for the Not So Korean podcast. And more from Tim later. So, remember episode 37 when I said this? A little introduction to what this no so low copo would be. The not so long Korean podcast. So the not so Korean podcast, but it is still the not so Korean podcast. It's just a shorter version. And this. This is not going to change the podcast series. It just means that in between those longer episodes, we would also have these other ones. Well, in episode 40, you're going to hear the first of the No So Loco Po episodes, the Not So Long Korean podcast. And we focus on this particular Korean topic, the Korean diaspora in film and Mark Kermode. And if you stay to the end of this short podcast, you'll also hear Tim, who hasn't been on the show for the last few episodes. And he mentions some information that I didn't talk about in this episode regarding a particular Korean related film. It's actually a film we've both seen. He saw it in London and I saw it in Korea and we've actually discussed it sort of uh, off air before. So without further ado, let's bring you into the episode. Enjoy! This is the Not So Korean Podcast. I am Jason Verney. As you probably know, and as we always say, we usually record this live in UK's Koreatown itself. That's an area in and around New Morden. Yes, that's the largest Koreatown and Korean community in Europe. But I must add a quick statement from me, Jay, before passing you over to myself on the fly and on the move somewhere else. Enjoy. In this little episode, I'm going to talk about briefly, or as brief as I can be to cover all this, the certain podcast with Mark Kermode and Simon Mayo. They are, um, uh, let's say, well, they're a podcast duo, but they're more than that in the UK. Mark Kermode is, uh, first of all, he's the most loved film critic in the in the UK and um, Simon Mayo they both had a history in radio TV and all sorts and they used to have a program on the BBC and now they have their own program their own show their own podcast they have a massive following uh, but it's called Kermode and Mayo's Take it's a very good and entertaining um, discussion that's always had between the two, or it's an inter- it's a review by Mark Kermode, and um, or his interviews as well with Simon Mayo, and it's yeah, it's very good. Anyway, on the 29th of December, they published an episode or a part of their show on YouTube, and I've actually included on my website a link to that. But I'm just going to talk briefly about this. Um, what it's regarding. Simon Mayo lists his top five films of the year and one of those films is a Korean related film, a Korean Korean diaspora related film you could say, and Mark Kermo then goes on to do his top five. And what astounded me was, I mean it's, it's, as I say in this article on my website miniminimovie.com, I do go into it a little bit more but it's not really a surprise that Mark Kermo first of all rates these films highly um, and they're in his top five but also that he's he's got a love for korean film Uh, he's got a a love for many different (laughs) genres different uh international films and um yeah very a varied choice a varied selection of films that he loves and he's an expert in so what he was doing was he was running down those five i wasn't it's sure what films they were going to mention but of course past lives comes up now that's the film that's doing well right now i say well now right now it's it's you know it's 
even if it's not playing in any sort of cinemas or theatres in certain places or it's you know it's in the charts um, on sort of, let's say purchasable or downloadable streaming films online and I'm sure you've heard of Past Lives if you haven't I, I highly recommend it I won't go into it too much here and Return to Soul which was Retour de Soul and if you if you've heard our previous podcasts and there was a two-part episode where we spoke to a Korean adoptee Aileen Alina and um, we reviewed or she reviewed uh, the the film Return to Soul a French made film uh, by a Cambodian French director and um, yeah so the, both that was about adoption but it's a Korean diaspora related film I mean, some people say it's a diaspora related film it's, a, it's an adoption related film but it, it nonetheless it is Korean related and so that was in this top five but past lives which I just mentioned actually is his number one choice and that's all the films that have come out in the whole year. He does go, He does also preempt that list with a list of many films that we, many of us will know that didn't make his list. Uh, just to show that it's been such a sort of a cracking year, if you like, a great year in 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 films, in movies. So yeah, it was it was became as it became as no surprise really that the, you know that he with his passion for Korean cinema, but it's not. It's not really because of that. It's because of the way the films are made and their use of language and um, music and, and other things. So what I've what I've done is I've put together, as I say, a small article on my website. My website is miniminimovie.com. I've had this website for about I don't know 12, 13 years. Uh, it's 90% career related. Um, when I started it, it was J- Japanese film, Hong Kong film, Korean, of course, and even non-Asian film. But there's a heavy leaning towards Korean film, including the London Korean Film Festival. I've been a sort of, I'm not an ambassador, but I've been a, uh, I had a press pass for that over the years. And there's lots of articles, there's lots of interviews as well with Korean actors, Korean directors, and Japanese, there's a, there's a few as well. And also in this article that you can find on miniminimovie.com, I've supplied links to Mark Kermode's um, reviews of some of his other films, other Korean films. Amongst those, there's Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, Lady Vengeance. Uh, as you know, that's in the Vengeance trilogy, um, which, which, makes, which is a trilogy made up with Old Boy as well. So there's those two. There's also a link to The Handmaiden, uh, Okja, Minari. Of course, that's not solely Korean, but it's a Korean-related film. And uh, Parasite. And I must say at this time as well, talking about Parasite, I put at the end of this article a little dedication to the very well-known actor in Korean cinema and Korean TV, Lee Sun Kyung. Uh, Lee Sun Kyung, but he's very... um, well known and it's a sad it's a loss it was only i think he died two days before that the good news of mark kermode's korean rated films you know the highly related top five films that include two korean related films so it's been as i mentioned in that article there is you know there's been a very sad end to december with the passing of lee sun kyung but also from my point of view, and I don't know if this went under the radar by a lot of people in the Korean sort of community or Korean film cineasts or uh, let's say Koreanists, <laughs> uh, those fanatical about Korea. But yeah, Mark Kermode's recent um, sort of New Year, you know, top top five films were that. Uh, talking about. Um, yeah, the death of Lee Sun Kyun. I also put on miniminimovie.com a, a small article, a short article, uh, sort of dedicated to his life, and the article is really dedicated to him. I've literally just named it his name, Lee Sun Kyun, with the date of his date of birth and date of death. There's also, as I say, there's a London Korean Film Festival news, there's a filmmaking podcast that I do, which is, has its own sort of space on the internet, but I feed it into Mini Mini Movie. 
and even some of these not so Korean podcasts I feed into it and in fact if you go to me sorry if this sounds like a promotion for miniminimovie.com but even on the home page at the very top uh, depending on how you how you on your browser there is a link to the Spotify version of not so Korean podcasts so that's it that's one of these little episodes we promise to put this kind of episode these shorter episodes amongst the standard long form or longer form episodes of the not so korean podcast i do recommend that you as i say check out the article but not just because it's the, my website but because not only in that to save you searching for the youtube video in which Mark Kermode does give his rundown of top five films. There's a link to that video itself in that article. So I highly recommend it. I highly recommend you tune into them as well. They're a very entertaining duo. They've got their own sort of quirky sort of in-jokes that they do and dad jokes and, um, yeah, all kinds of stuff. They're, they're a great sort of... Um, I often listen to their podcasts, even if I'm not likely to see the film that they're talking about. It's interesting to see their take, and it's quite surprising sometimes. Mark, Ker- Mark Kermode's reviews of films that you expect him not to like, but he does, or vice versa. And yeah, he's, they've got a massive following. They've got their own sort of universe, you could say. You know, people, they, they have names for their strands and um, you know they're following the sort of church they, they, I think they call it I I'm gonna leave it at that I hope you manage to get through this these are shorter episodes these ones are being interspersed with the longer episodes and we have a lot of stuff coming your way and in this second series yeah a couple of interviews lined up which should be on their ways to on their way to you very soon so all the best uh, talk to you next time see ya and yongi yes hi jay this is tim calling in for the not so korean podcast and i apologize my voice isn't um in normal condition at the moment but Anyway, I just wanted to leave a brief message to tell you guys about Broker, uh, which is another film that Mark Kermode briefly mentioned as being one of his honorable mentions uh, for the year 2023, even though technically it is a 2022 film. I believe it came out in South Korea in 2022, and I also saw it in, in London in 2022 as part of the London Korean Film Festival. And, um, yeah, really enjoyed it. Although, yes, it was uh, released in the UK in a wider release in 2023. So if you don't know about the film, it's actually directed by a Japanese filmmaker, Hirokazu Koreeda, who's quite famous. He's done many other films like Shoplifters, and he has a a new one out this uh, coming up soon, I think, called Monster. But anyway, Broker stars Song Gang-ho, Kang Dong Wan, Bei Du Na, and many other Korean actors. It was filmed in Korea, Korean story, um, Korean language. So it is essentially a Korean film, um, aside from the director and writer. Um, but um, anyway, yeah, it's a beautiful film. It re- revolves around characters associated with baby boxes, which is a thing in Korea where um, mothers who don't feel they're able to take care of their children can leave their babies in a box anonymously and uh, then there will be somebody who will pick up the baby and um, take care of it Um, so yeah it's kind of a sad thing but it's um, a really nice story very touching drama and um, I don't know if this baby box concept exists in other countries perhaps it does But um, anyway, yeah, I recommend the film. If you haven't seen it already, I think it's available on home media or streaming now, or you can rent it online somewhere. But um, anyway, yeah. Um, So that's another film that Mark Kermode really enjoyed, and I did as well. So yeah, hope you get to check it out. And thanks for having me on the show again, Jason. And uh, 
guess we'll be talking again soon for the podcast on a more uh, fuller or more proper episode coming soon. So, yeah, cheers. Take care. Bye. Well, we hope you enjoyed that episode. So that's all from us. Annyeonghi. Guess they are.